Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Reverse Engineering of a Domestic Lead Lamp. Please be aware that this is an educational tutorial. I am not affiliated with any manufacturer of the lamp or any devices that uh, I'm going to discuss. And please do not copy or use the design that I'm showing before clearing patents and trade secret issues. Now the lamp that I'm going to discuss is this one. It's a 12 watt LED lamp specified at 150 lumens designed for 230 volt AC. This is the average voltage in Israel. 90 milliamp input current and 50 hertz line frequency. Now if I divide the 150 lumens by the 12, I get 95 lumen per watt, which is sort of acceptable. Now this is when I'm opening this lamp, there is a cover here, an opaque cover, and this is a base plate with the LEDs around it. Let's have a look at here closer. There are 15 LEDs at the circumference. Then there is an IC here, and these are two resistors. Uh, each one of 39 ohms, so we have actually two in parallel, which is 18 ohms. So this is the part which is actually illuminating. As you can see, there is a PCB here, and indeed, if I open it, there is a little PCB here, and let's have a look at it. One side, there is a rectifier, and also a resistor of one megom. Here it is. And on the other side, there is a 8.2 microfarad capacitor, 400 volt, and this is apparently for the voltage uh, after rectification of the 220 volts. So here is the schematics. What we see here is a very simple circuit. We have a rectifier. We have a 8.2 microfarad capacitor, so it's a capacitive filter type of rectification. One mega ohm resistor, which is apparently uh, for uh, bleeding of this capacitor. And then we have an array of LEDs, 15 LEDs, and this is the IC device, and here is the 18 ohm, the two 39 uh, ohm uh, resistors in parallel uh, connected in series here. Now, some basic calculation here, if we have a 230 volt AC line, the peak value is 325, so I'd assume that this voltage is about 325, 320, um, maybe a little bit less on the average, and the peak value will be 325, it's a DC basically with some ripple on it because the current is fairly low, although the capacitor is small, we'll do the calculation later on. Now the average current I expect here can be calculated by considering the fact that the power is 12 watt and the voltage here is at 325 volts. So the power 12 over 325 brings about 37.5 million. So this is the current flowing through this path, which is the main uh, power consumption of this unit. This is an negligible and, and there is some drop on this rectifier and perhaps a little power dissipation in this cup. Now the question is, what is this device? Now, it seems that this is a, a regulator for constant current. It is placed in series with the LED, so it's sort of controlling the LED current to be constant. Now, I was not able to locate the particular device which is in the lab. There's a part number, but I just couldn't locate it. So therefore, I looked for something which is similar, and indeed there are a number of companies, including OnSemi, there are some other, who are making this type of regulators. So here is one example, which would sort of fit the bill, because this is a regulator between 20 and 40 milliamp, and we need 37.5, so it's okay. And indeed, there is a, a leg here for adjusting the current. This, this will be the resistor that we have in the lamp. However, this particular unit, although the current is, is correct, the package is incorrect because this is an SOT and this is a, a D-pack. So OnSemi itself is making also a unit which is a D-pack. This is this exact unit, this exact package, but this particular one has a higher current. So obviously the unit which is here is by some other vendor who has this 
package with the current that is required, which is about 37 milliamps. So, all in all, however, we can conclude that this device is this uh, current regulator, and there is a leg here for adjusting the current, and the 18 ohm resistor uh, just doing that. So here we have again the circuit, the rectifier, filter, array of LEDs, and we now understand that this is a uh, constant current regulator, but there is another problem here. We have 15 LEDs here, 15 LEDs. Now, the normal voltage drop of a LED that we are, the popular LEDs, is two to three volts. Now, let's assume it's a three volt LED, times 15, we have 44 volts. But this doesn't make sense because if there is a 45 drop on the diodes, then the rest of the voltage drop, the rest of the 325, is on this uh, regulator and just doesn't make really sense because uh, first of all, uh, the power dissipation would be high and second, and most of the power is actually dissipated uh, by the device. And lo and behold, it turns out that there are LEDs with high forward voltage. This is just one example. This is one company who makes them. There's other companies who are making them. And here are LEDs. These are single die, multi-junction technology sort of LEDs. It's a single die. It's not the, an array of uh, LEDs, but just one unit that has a forward voltage. It's a multi-junction, they call it. It's an elongated junction. And the forward voltage here for this unit is 22 volts. Now, unfortunately, this particular unit is uh, 20 milliamp. We need 37, so it's more compatible with this unit. This unit, however, has 33 volts. So, again, the unit that we have in the lamp is probably not none of these. It's from another vendor. But if we assume a 22 volt drop, 22 times 15 lamp LEDs is 330 volt, which is pretty reasonable for the design we are talking about. So obviously we have in this lamp a LED with high forward voltage in the range of 22, 22, 33 volt voltage drop. Now if we look at the specification of this lamp, it's, it's pretty much like any other LED except that the forward voltage, this is the VI curve, and you see here this is 20 volts, so 22 is here, and this is the nominal current, so it's just a uh, forward drop uh, higher than the normal single uh, junction LED. Now the illumination is again a function of the current, this is the nominal, say, uh, current, it, that's the one, and then it goes up and down depending on the uh, current intensity. If we look at this particular LED as a reference, it's a 20, mi 20 milliamp lamp, 22 volt drop, so this is the power, and it has a emission of, depending on the color here, uh, 58 or 52 lumens, let's say an average of 55, so it comes out to be uh, 130 lumens per watt. Now the lamp we have found is 95 lumens per watt, which is kind of compatible, taking into account that some of the power is really lost on the constant current regulator. So we seem to be in uh, good shape in terms of understanding what's going on here. Let's have a look now at the uh, ripple and the input current. This is a rectifier with a capacitive filter, so the voltage across the capacitor will look something like this red line here, it's charging, discharging, charging, discharging. Only during the charging there is a line input, it should be picky with high current peaks uh, during this um, charging period. The line frequency is uh, 50 hertz, so half a cycle is 10 millisecond. So let's assume that the time here is about uh, 8 milliseconds, just as approximation without going into the detailed analysis here. Anyhow, the capacitor has a tolerance and so uh, let's do an approximation here. Then the voltage drop according to the uh, 
state space equation of the capacitor uh, will be the 8 millisecond times 37.5 uh, milliamp divided by 8.2 microfarad the capacitor, we find it to be 36 volt. So it's about 10% um, or a little bit more, 12% of the total voltage, which is uh, not so bad. Uh, mind you, the as long as the constant current regularly is operating, the current through the lens will be constant, even though there will be ripple on the line. So looking now at the real measurement, this is a measurement made, uh, we found that indeed the input current is fairly high, it's a peak to peak of 0.8 amp, so it's about 0.44 amp peak each side, fairly high for this uh, 12 watt lamp. But since it's 12 watt, which is less than 50 watt, then it doesn't have to comply with the line harmonic uh, standard. This is IC 1000-2-3, and we are talking about class C for lighting, which is starting at 50 watts. So we don't have to worry about that. But if we have, say, five lamps, it's already 60 watts. But the standard doesn't talk about many devices, it talks about one device, so from the point of view of the standard, uh, it is okay. Remember that if we are going to have uh, many lamps like this around the house, then we might have some problem with harmonics. To alleviate some of this uh, high harmonics, uh, on semi, this is an on semi suggestion, suggest to actually use a circuit like this. This is now, again, a rectifier, these are the current constant current regulators. Uh, they're showing two here, and with this switch, you can have a two-step uh, dimming. This is two intensities. Here are the lamp. These are regular lamps of pre-throwing three, so they have something like 38 LEDs for 110 volt RMS. Over the 220, they'll have to be twice. Okay, so there will be many many lamps if. Uh, these regular lamps are used. Now the advantage of the circuit is of course that uh, current here, this is the current, this is the current through the LEDs and this is of course also the current through the input and the current is now much broader so therefore the higher harmonic are of uh, lower amplitude and however we have a problem of course that this light now is pulsing at 100 Hertz and uh, this is sort of a problem because there are some people who are a bit sensitive to that and also um, if you operate a machinery there might be a, a safety problem so it's either the you use this pulsating uh, light or you use a capacitor which sort of smooths out the uh, voltage you get a dc light output but uh, of course the input current will be pulsing. Now let's have a look now a little bit about the efficiency of this unit. If I assume that the voltage drop on the constant current regulator is about 40 volts, it'll be something in, in this region for the proper design, then the efficiency will be the, the voltage on the diodes, which is 325 minus 40, divided by 325, which is about 87%. And the power dissipation of this IC, of this constant current regulator, will be, say, around 40 volt times 37.5 milliamp, which is 1.5 watt, which is okay for this uh, DPAC device. Now, another point that one has to worry about is what happens if the input voltage is changing. Now, say the change is about plus minus 6% around the nominal value. Now the characteristic of the constant current regulator is something like this. Uh, at the beginning there is no current and then as we reach a certain value of voltage across it then we start having this constant current and then there is a limit here at the maximum voltage and there is a, actually a sort of a breakdown and there is no regulation here. So if the voltage here due to the low input voltage is too low, 
then there'd be no current and uh, there'd be no light. However, if the voltage here is too high, then there is a danger because uh, we'll break down here and there'd be no regulation to the current and as the voltage goes up and up, the current will start going up and up. And uh, since this is a diode with a low resistance, then of course the, the current will increase very rapidly, so there is a danger here. So the most important part of this uh, design is to make sure that at a maximum expected voltage, you will not exceed this maximum VAK of this uh, constant current regulator device. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.